many more things to explore with uh, optical sticks, uh, particle brushes, and uh, this tutorial will be uh, focused on uh, just a few of the uh, additional little details to explore and, and work with when you paint with particle brushes. Um, you may have seen some uh, beautiful artwork. Just recently I posted a new one on the website. Here it is at uh, thebest3d.com and you'll see this one here. Um, click on that. This is one of the newest uh, contributions by Attila Kohl. I call it the Attila the Hun. He's from Hungary, uh, Hungarian artist, phenomenal artist. Uh, and here's a beautiful piece of artwork that he did with uh, the particle brushes and also some foliage brushes that we have in version 8. So you see the, some of the branches and the additional leaves in the foreground here, but much of the background here done with the regular Optipo sticks particle brushes. <coughs> so there's lots more to explore here. I encourage you to scroll through that and see some of his artwork. It's very inspiring. And some of it uses Poser as well, and um, most of it is dog waffle artwork here. Very inspiring. So um, one thing I'd like to do is uh, see a few more of these commands. Um, we have in the particle brushes uh, a lot of presets, right? You can load an existing preset and you might find this a little bit tedious if you have to go to that button to go look for that and then scroll through it and then you know, look for another one and scroll through that. Um, what you could do is you can actually load the browse media button. You can go to that and there are of course your favorites here at the top. And the one thing I do is I tack it down if you want to keep that uh, around. And you have oils, so you can do some groovy paint there. You have all sorts of different oils, <coughs> some smearing styles. Um, and well, but in, in regards to particles, if you scroll down there to the bottom, uh, actually down here in this list, uh, you'll see that there's also bristles and particles. All right, so bristle brushes, some of the presets. Uh, there including uh, using some orbitals and then particle brushes right there. So, so all, of, all of the presets that you see here under the load button, all of these presets are also available in your um, in your browse media button there, in your browse media interface. So that, that makes it kind of really handy. Um, it's it's a, one long list of, of all the presets and so yeah, you may need to scroll through that if you have an extensive list, right? If you if you add many to that, then it gets long. But here's an example where it's actually barely, just fairly fitting here on my capture of uh, 1280 by 720. Um, and so I have the weird eyelashes at the bottom and I can start with that. Um, let's move that to the side and I'll go and take this one over here, all right? So, you know, that's the nice thing is that you can, you can go and uh, grab one, paint with it. Let's go erase that. There you go. So grab one, uh, grab another one. Oops, that was not it. Hold on. Wrong button. I see I switched it over to the other side. Okay, so here, particles. There you go. So I need to pick from this. Here's the genie effect. Right, just a single click will do. So that's a very quick and handy way to work with different particle brushes that you like. And so that's one thing I wanted to show. The other thing is those additional buttons here. In fact, let me uh, pick one of the uh, settings for Genie Effect, like this one here, right? Now, if you look at that Genie Effect, it keeps going, it keeps going, and it just never slows down. It doesn't get smaller and smaller, right? So one thing I'd like to do is show you this one here under the More button. And this is something you have since, I think, version 4.1 or 4.0 or something like that, with the free updates for 4.1 for sure. Uh, this is the uh, H decrement feature. And basically what it does is it makes sure that every time that the particles are respawned or, or split, they do get smaller and their lifespan gets shorter and shorter and shorter again. So if I give it something like a one and I erase this, you'll see that as it's going, it's getting smaller and smaller and eventually it just disappears. And this is really useful if you want to do things like roots. Uh, so let's take some of the, one of the presets here uh, I know here's one called roots, and if you if you look at that, or, or trees in general and bushes, you know, see now it's getting smaller and smaller. So whereas before, if you had it at zero, it didn't decrement with the age. Um, let's give it a slightly brighter color, or maybe something a little bit more greenish, brownish. 
There you go. All right. <clears throat> and uh, perhaps less of the gravity. Let's give it zero gravity and a little bit more on the randomization. There you go. All right. So um, without the AG command, it just keeps going. It's it's all over there, right? And if I go with one, it gets smaller and smaller. So this is really great because you can start at the bottom, sort of the base, and then have some roots that grow up at the bottom again, go up towards the end. And then one thing you can also do, so that's one thing, that was the age decrement. You can make it, you know, a very fast decrement, a little bit faster there. Six goes really fast. So it's very short, right? But it, it adds a, a phenomenal additional uh, realism to it and lots of different ways to use that. <coughs> One thing also to try is remember that um, you have the option to press the shift key while you're painting. I'm going to go back to age decrement here at zero so it's back at this right but let's say I want to uh, to stop it at a particular point and I'm going to say let's split it uh, zero times but let's live the lifespan longer. Let's give it 55. Right. If I if I paint it like this, then at the very middle here, it's gonna look like uh, it's been cut off, because the white area is just where the new particles have started, and then they they branch out and get thinner and thinner, and they also change color against the gradient. Right. And and it's even more visible if you go the other way. You have the dark in the middle, and you can tell that. The moment I lift, I lift my uh, my mouse button here, it's it stops, and there's a couple that were cut off here that were sort of like they didn't uh, get to finish their journey towards the tip of the dark uh, the dark thin ends. And so, if you don't want that, if you want the very last particles to still finish, but you don't want to add new particles, you want to finish that. What you do is you hold the shift key down. Right, so you press. And when you say when you're getting close to the end, hold the shift key down, and you see a few more ending, and that's it. Let me do that again. Uh, this time I'm coming from the upper right corner, and I'm oh, shift. There you go. And what you can see is that when I once I press the shift key, a few more are finishing up, but there's no new ones being generated, and so that way it doesn't look like it's cut off. Let me do a comparison again. I'm going to start on the left side and go to the right with that. Right, so left E. That's without shift key, and you see how it's ending here. And now I'm doing this, and shift now, and let me do undo that again, a little bit farther. There, there you go. So you can see that there are some here that were cut off, like this one here. Let's zoom into that. There are some fat ones here that that didn't get to finish to the dark thin end because they were cut off the room that I lifted my 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 button on the mouse. Whereas here, all of the ones that had already been started, they get to finish. So that's the shift key. That's one of the features in the particle brush system that you can finish with when you have the particle brushes already going and you want to end, but you, those that have been launched, you want to finish. So let's see that with very long lifespan, let's say 300. Right. So I'm going like this and perhaps more so on a dark color background. So let's erase to black. There you go. And let's do without too much randomization. And maybe not 300, maybe 200. There you go. Okay. And if I stop now, yeah, you see there's a lot of the white ones here that were started but never ended. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, if, if I have color changes that are abrupt, it will be even more dramatic. Let's say if I have a lot of red here, so I keep the red, but I reduce the green suddenly and the blue suddenly. So I have a lot of red there and maybe I soften it a little bit. There you go. So now you can see that you know, they start with this red into yellow and then they gradually go into the gray and black thin. Well, if I if I just end the particle drawing, you'll see this right there. You'll notice how it's kind of a stump. It's been cut off. And what we'd really like to do, maybe if it represents the end of a 
or of a twig or of a pine branch is we want to finish those that have been generated already. Those that have launched, those that have started, we want to finish them. We want to see them go through to the end. And I do that with the shift key. There you go. Shift. And keep going until nothing moves and then you can let go of the mouse. Okay, so I have my left hand on the shift key and with the right hand I use the mouse. Move the mouse and then shift now and there you go. Let's, let's see that with an existing particle brush. Um, let's see there is one called the pine branch. There, let's take this one. Right. And let's make it a little bit longer and less erratic, less randomized. Let's give it zero randomization. And lifespan 123, so much longer parts. Uh, maybe not that long. That's 55. Okay. And then also uh, a little bit less on the gravity. Let's give it just a tiny little bit, 0 0.03. There you go. All right. So we got this. If I stop, boom, it looks like it's been cut off. You're like you've br you've broken off that branch, that twig. Whereas if you if you use the shift key, now you see that they kind of continue to the end. Now this one has a negative um, drag. Excuse me, a positive, a strong positive drag. So it goes in the opposite direction. The particles kind of move the other direction. I'll probably want to try slightly below 1, like 0 0.9 and I think with that it may go a little bit ahead of us let's, let's try 0 there you go okay here's an example, you see it kind of stop here and if you go with the shift key you still see them finish and it, it ends up being a cleaner end here there all right, so hopefully that'll give us some ideas to explore some more things. We've seen the force field already in some other parts, uh, some other tutorials. In fact, let's do that one more time. I'm going to load a force field, <coughs> which means basically we load an image <coughs> of some sort. Uh, could be an image of something you rendered in a 3D program, perhaps, maybe a skull, and you want to make it, give it a hairy look. <coughs> I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to do something more randomized. Uh, let's say plasma noise. <coughs> and um, let's give it something like this, a little bit more contrast and uh, grayscale it through a particular color, there you go. Then increase the contrast there with the value adjust, where's the contrast, something like this, there you go. Alright, so now I'm going to use that as the force field and so when I do that, click that, it takes that as a gradient and builds a force field for the particles to be deflected with. If I don't use any force field, the particles go their own way, right? But if you use a force field, they start being deflected and affected by the presence of that image. And even if the image is gone, it's, it's now in the force field, right? So you can go and set the power to zero and nothing happens. The particles go about their own way with gravity and other things, other parameters, randomization if you have that. But it's really clean, in this case no randomization, so it behaves like that. And then when you have very strong power, the particles are totally channeled and directed and redirected by that. Um, you can also go and have a force drag, a little bit stronger. And so that's how you could possibly have something like an image of, I don't know, a skull or some bones or something that you want to make it look like it's a little bit moldy and add some some uh, some hairy look to that because it will basically adjust or adhere to the um, to the shape of that image underneath it all right so that's one more thing that was let's go free that up that was the um, force field we've seen uh, most of the other parameters so far of course, there's still some styles changes we can experiment with here.